Okay, welcome. In this video, we're going to just briefly be talking about photosynthesis. You may have seen that um, in your lessons at this time. It's an important process and in, in reality is quite detailed in all the, the um, chemical reactions that take place, but we're going to keep it on a fairly simple level here just so that you kind of have a, a general overview of it at the particular grade level that you're in right now. And then as you progress through school, you'll be learning more and more details about it. So photosynthesis, I kind of like this picture here because um, it shows the main things that are needed for photosynthesis. I see the sun. We need some sun energy. So there it is, says light energy. That's very important to the plant. Um, and it looks like for photosynthesis to occur, we need carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide is a gas. And what's kind of interesting about it is that the plant likes to take it in, in fact needs it to produce food, because that's actually what, fo what photosynthesis is. It's the process of using energy from the sun to actually make food for the plant, makes glucose. So the plant takes in light energy, it takes in carbon dioxide, and then if you look down here, you'll notice that another important um, item is that the plant needs water for photo photosynthesis to occur. And this kind of is just a little brief, um, a, a little brief synopsis there. Water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight combine in the leaf to make sugar. So sugar is the food that the, the plant produces for itself. Now kind of interesting is that you notice the root system down here is certainly uh, an important part of the plant. It stabilizes the plant in the, in the ground. Um, most water is absorbed through the roots to take up then to all parts of the plant. And then um, also some roots um, is where the storage of the glucose, you know, the food that is made by the plant, that's where it's stored as starch. In fact, a great example would be your potato. Potato is, is part of the root and it's where, where the starch is stored for the plant to use later on as, as food. Of course, we harvest it and then we eat it. So it's a good food for us too. So then um, we know the three things that uh, we need to have um, in order for photosynthesis to take place. An interesting thing too is, do you notice that the plant gives off oxygen? Now kind of interesting that we breathe in the oxygen and then we breathe, we exhale or breathe out the carbon dioxide. The plant takes what we have breathed out, that's what it needs to take in to, um, to do the photosynthesis. So we kind of help each other out. Okay, so let's see. I want you to take a look over here. It looks like we have a, um, a leaf here. Now if you were to pick a leaf off of a tree or a plant or whatever and you look at it from the side, it's very, very thin. So to our, just our naked eye, we wouldn't be able to see all these things. But if I took a piece of it and I looked under a microscope, I would actually be able to see there's a lot more there than it looks like to me with my naked eye. So I can actually see the top of the um, of the leaf, you know, the top that would be visible here. Now as we work our way down, look at it. Look at, here's a layer of cells. And this is actually called the palisade layer. You notice how nice and organized and neat it is there. They're all standing up like columns. So we have that layer. And then down below, here's a layer here too. And you notice it has some air spaces in it. They call that the spongy layer, and probably that's a good term for it because like a sponge that has air holes in it, this is the spongy layer there. So we have the palisade layer and we have the spongy layer there. Now down here, before I go into it, here's some words that you need to know, for, you know, and you may read um, up on it in your lessons, but you'll be needing it. You'll be needing to know them for your quizzes and for your tests. We've talked about light. Um, remember the light energy that needs to come down. The plant needs to change that light energy into some type of energy it can use. But it's important to get it initially from the sun. <clears throat> Starch, we've talked about that, the storage form of the glucose that the plant makes for food. Carbon dioxide, that gas that the plant takes in. Oxygen, the um, gas that the plant releases uh, during the process of photosynthesis. So we're kind of left here with chloroplasts and chlorophyll. Now if you look up here in the spongy, I'm, I'm not the spongy, I mean the palisade layer here. The spongy layer 
also have in those cells. You can also find some chloroplasts, but mainly the chloroplasts. Those are the dark little um, dots that you can see in each of these cells here. The chloroplasts are where um, the it's the structure that the light energy is changed into an energy that the plant can use. That's the, that's where it, this is where it all happens, right in there, in the chloroplast, which are found primarily in the palisade layer of the cells there. And you can, like I said, you can see the little dots there representing the little chloroplast. And you can also see some down here in that spongy layer. You know, you can see some of the little dots inside each cell because there are some of the chloroplasts down there too, but primarily they're up here in the palisade layer. Now, um, I'm going to switch to the next slide because I think it shows it a little bit better. You'll see a, you can see, see this little hole on the top of the leaf? I'm going to show you that in the next slide also. But remember we were talking about where the gases come in, the carbon dioxide comes into the plant and where oxygen is released, it's through these little um, these little holes in the top and bottom of the leaf. They're called stomata or stoma. So let's go on to the next slide here. And here's a really good, and I put the, the uh, other one I had here too so you can kind of compare, but here's a great enlargement of this. Here's that palisade layer there, all those cells lined up so neatly like columns. And on the inside, you can see all the little chloroplasts. See all the little chloroplasts there? And if you look down here, remember in the spongy layer, I was uh, mentioning that the cells down there have some too, but you can see that most of the chloroplasts are up here in that nice um, organized um, palisade layer there. So remember, as far as a definition, those little chloroplasts that you see here are the structure, those are the structures, where the light energy that comes into the plant, it's changed right there into an energy form that the plant can use to do all the processes that it has to do, including making food. So you can't use it just as light energy. The light energy has to come in and be changed into a different type of energy that the plant can actually use. Now, um, the other word that I wanted you to know was the um, chlorophyll. You'll notice that the chlorophyll here, um, does it say chlorophyll? No, it doesn't here. Actually, inside each of the chloroplasts, because they look green, inside each of the chloroplasts are a green pigment, and that green pigment is called chlorophyll. It's the actual pigment that absorbs the light. Okay, such that then it, the plant can change it into a form of energy that it can use to do all the things that it needs to do, including making food. So um, do some reviewing on that. If you have any questions, I want you to give me a call. Kind of compare what I've said here to maybe what you're reading in your lesson. And so that I can give you 100% points for watching this and considering it, thinking about it, I'd like to have you give me a call. It'll take only maybe one to two minutes. I want to just briefly discuss with you what you've seen here. And then you get the full credit for this particular project. So uh, my phone number is 300. 0464. So you might even want to give me a call as soon as you get off of this so that you can have that taken care of and um, get your points before you forget. So thanks for coming and I hope that helped a bit. Bye-bye.